Hello and welcome to this React course for complete beginners. My name is Pranjal and I will be your course instructor. By the end of this course, you will have some deep understanding of main concepts and also get great big picture overview how to develop real world React app. This course is a proper mix of theoretic concepts and a practical hands-on in order to build confidence how to apply React skills into the real world. So let's quickly go through the topics which I'm going to cover here. So firstly, we're going to cover the fundamental concepts of React, like what are React components, then what are different types of React components, then props, then states. Then we're going to understand that how you can use or you can say add bootstrap into your React app, then do some styling, then we're going to learn about different hooks, then event handling, then form handling, and much more. So at the end of this course, you'll become more confident over React programming language and start your career into this. Hope you enjoy this course. See you in the class platform. Hi there and welcome back. In this lesson, you will learn about React framework and here I will answer multiple questions which might be pop up on your mind when you hear React for the first time. Like what is React? Why React is popular? Why I should learn React? What are the benefits as a developer you will get while using React? Don't worry my friend, here in this lesson, I will try to answer all of these questions. So without any further ado, let's get started. So what exactly React is? React is a JavaScript library for building fast and interactive user interface. It is developed at Facebook, now known as Meta, in 2011 and currently it is the most popular JavaScript library for building user interface. As you can see here in Google Trend, React is the dominating one over other JavaScript libraries like Angular and Vue. Not only in Google Trend, you can see the popularity of React even in Stack Overflow Developer Survey. Here you can see that React is chosen as the first choice among developers in the category of most loved and most wanted framework. Is it true? that react is awesome it is and here let me tell one more stunning fact about react it is also being used by huge giant tech companies like meta tesla uber yahoo paypal and list goes on and on because the benefits which react provides none of the other frameworks does as compared to other framework react is more easy to use and it allows developers to quickly and efficiently build interactive and dynamic UI with minimal coding. It makes the life of developer much easier thanks to its simplicity and the modular infrastructure. Yeah, it is modular. React follows component-based architecture, which divides whole application into small chunks of logical code, which is also known as components. And it makes the life of developer much easier because if you have any kind of bug, it is easier to find and you can reuse that same component over and over again. Not only it offers benefits to the developer, it also offers benefits to the tech IT companies as it saves huge amount of money. And that's why there is rapid growth in the demand of the React. And that's the reason that React developer gets high scale salary because of the high demand. Okay, and React also offers a strong community of developers. So, if you are just started learning React or you are an expert who is stuck in somewhere in your project, bug, or wanted to solve out some problem, then you have the people to solve that particular thing. So, these are various benefits which you are going to have with react so in this course you are going to learn the fundamental concepts of react how to use react and create real world application hope you will enjoy this course hi there welcome back in this lesson you will learn how to create very first react application let's begin for react we need two things installed on our system node and a text editor or any ide of choice 
After which, we're gonna use a command line interface tool which is create react app through which we will be able to quickly create and run our react application without any configurations. So simply write down npx create react app and whatever project name you want to give. Okay. Now after running up this command here you can see new folders new files are now creating. Okay. So the very first file which we got package.json which is a kind of a manifest file which contains the list of all dependencies or packages which is needed for our project and then we have note module a folder which contains all the packages and libraries inside this note modules so we're going to have the separate session on the folder directory in future till then we're going to focus on creating very first react application so Without further any ado, we're going to go inside this project directory and simply run npm start. With the help of npm start, it will going to run a script through which our project will going to be started. Okay, so it will going to take a time. Here you can see it opened a web browser, and here you can see in the URL we have localhost with a port 3000. 3000 is the default port for this running up the react application so congratulations my friend we have successfully created our first react application this is the beginning and from here we're going to learn some more concepts of react and build a real world application so here you learn how you can use a very cool command line interface tool which is create react app through which we have built the react application without doing any kind of configurations we don't need to install any packages or any library kind of things like webpack or babel it did its job completed the installations and the configurations and just running up, up our application so that's all so hope you understand how you can create a react application hope you enjoyed till then Keep learning, keep exploring, and stay motivated, my friend. Hello, friends. Welcome back. In the previous lesson, you have learned how to build React application. Now, to add the efficiency, we need to use the IDE. So, here in this lesson, we're gonna download and install Visual Studio Code for the productivity because it saves a lot of time. The IDE has a feature of auto correction, auto complete, bracket matching, syntax highlighting snippets and much more so here i'm going to use visual studio code which is my favorite ide because it is super fast a lightweight source code editor and which is very perfect for day to day use okay as it supports multiple languages you can see python java javascript okay so here i'm going to download this visual studio code for windows or if you're using Mac OS or any Linux then you need to install that kind of version accordingly okay so I've downloaded this Visual Studio code and now we have successfully installed on our system now here this is the first look of the Visual Studio code we got some pop-up message so I'm just going to close each pop-up message which are right there so we have got some guide here on the welcome screen that we suggest that how you can use this Visual Studio Code effectively. On the bottom, you got terminal. Okay, so you don't need to have a command prompt, additional command prompt. You can simply use this command prompt from IDE. Okay, on the left hand side, you got some more options like you can open the project directly from here, then the search option is there. Then for version control, we have an option up there then for run and debug and at the last we have some extensions Visual Studio Code is famous for its extensions its cool extension and here I'm gonna use our extension which will going to add some more productivity into our development so here I'm gonna use this ES7 plus react Redux react native snippet with the help of this extension you just need to use some shortcuts and it will going to add that particular snippet into your project file let me show you afterwards but before it 
we need to open the Visual Studio Code for the project which we have created in the earlier lesson. So here you need to open the command prompt. Okay, we for one time you need to open this command prompt, and here you need to use the command code, which is a short form for this Visual Studio Code. You just need to use this code command and by default when you are installing that visual studio code it is already added into your path environment okay so just simply you need to write code and then space then dot dot simply means the current directory so you need to open your project directory then open the command from up there and simply use this code space dot command to open up that project into your visual studio code Okay, other option is like from where you can simply open your project but i'm choosing this option which works effectively for me so now here you can see we have successfully opened our project files and directories into this visual studio code so here i'm going to create a simple js file and show you how that particular extension will going to work for us okay so here just simply write down rfc and here you can see uh, this is a shortcut for functional component of the react okay and other snippets secrets are rcc rfce rfcp and many other so we're going to use the snippet shortcuts to add snippets on our project file as it will going to save a lot of time for us okay so that's all hope you understand why do we need uh, ide for the development work hi there and welcome back here in this lesson you will learn about folder structure of react app and here you can see we have three folders and four files to begin with at the top we have note module folder where all the dependencies are installed and it is generated when we have run that command create react app for the first time and now whenever you're going to install any new packages or libraries using npm install that particular library will go reside here another folder which we have which is public folder here the main component is the index.html and this is the only HTML file which we are going to find in our react application. Here we are going to build single page application which means that our web page that interacts with the user by dynamically rewriting the current web page with the new data. We are not going to add any changes or any code here maybe in head tag in the future. For that purpose, we are going to use the only one div tag with id root. At the runtime, the React app will going to take this div tag and do the changes dynamically using this div tag. Other than it, we have this src folder where we're going to spend most of our time during development. And here, the app.css is used for, you know, styling the web page. And then we have app.js this is the one of the component of our web page so whatever changes which we're going to do here we're going to reflect into our react application then this is app.test.js this is for unit testing and uh, index.css is for styling again for the index.html then we have index.js this is the main js file which you can see and here you can find that root id which is linked with our index.html then some more test files and that's get ignore file package log.json is responsible for checking up all the required dependencies are installed in the right way or not okay so here you can find the list of all the dependencies and the libraries here whether your package manager is yarn or npm they will going to check this file and then we have package.json and here it contains the list of the required dependencies for our project and you can find the version as well now this is readme.md where some of the guidelines are given for using this react app okay so this is all about the folder structure of the react app now we are going to do some minor changes into our project and make it a hello world app. So here we are going to remove some of the content, some of the files which are not required right now. So I have removed the unit test files 
and uh, also remove that vital files as well and i'm going to remove it from in this .js is the import thing okay and let us rerun our application just write npm start now here we're going to add header tag here and just simply to, i'm going to write hello world let me check that our application is running or not it's just still uh, processing so let me tell you one more thing like with react we are actually creating the single page application so whatever changes which we are going to do here in the app.js will be responsible for the display into our web page and with the help of spa which is single page application it makes our application our app more faster more responsive and more mobile friendly as compared to the traditional app traditional apps were actually driven by servers rendered HTMLs, where the user interaction would result in generating a new request therefore loading a new entire page and this causes a slow loading hence poor performance with poor customer experience and here with the help of react we are building a single page application which makes our app more super fast and more more friendly so i'm going to remove some more things which are not required here and this is our hello world app hello friends welcome back here in this lesson we're going to set up an environment for our project which is to do app here we're going to use a command line interface tool which is create react app through which we will be able to create and run react application quickly and the best part of it is without doing any kind of configuration you just need to write npx space create dash react dash app and whatever you want to choose name for your project in our case to do app is the name of our project and after it when your command is completed just simply go inside your directory your project directory and just write down npm start and it it's going to start your react application here i'm using visual studio code as ide for my project which makes my task much easier and uh, saves a lot of time so here you can see that our react application is up and running now i'm going to remove some of the files from my react project so like you know test cases report web titles then some svgs and so on so first of all, I'm going to remove this content because these contents are not required for this time. And uh, let me remove this section as well. And here I'm going to use the header tag. Okay. Let me check some more things. Yeah. This icons as well I'm going to remove. Now just open app.js and use header tag and just write simply hello world. Okay as one should be small case so here we have created simple hello world app and now in another lesson we're gonna jump into bootstrap thing till then keep learning keep exploring hello friends welcome back in this lesson we're going to add bootstrap into our website okay so this is a simple hello world app which we have created and now we're gonna add the bootstrap and feel the magic of bootstrap into our website so first of all before jumping into bootstrap we will need to create the component and inside the component folder we're going to create a js file form.js okay and now here we're going to use fragment fragment is one of the features of react which allows you to wrap multiple elements without adding an extra node into your dome okay so i'm using the fragment here instead of using fragment you can simply add a root dome but that makes ridiculous okay so you need to use fragment and now this is the bootstrap the main page and here we're going to include all the cdn links into our project the first cdn link is about the css and the second one will be about javascript okay so copy that URL and open index.html which is the main or you can say the primary HTML page which you can found our, in our React project. So I have pasted this 
the CDN links into my index.html and now we're going to open this form section here this is a basic form which you can find and I'm gonna copy this layout and paste it over into my form.js okay open form.js and here I, again I'm going to use the fragment and yeah you and you can see we got some error so you need to put the closing tag and for input now here you can see a simple form is on our react project email address and the password here we have two text area and one button and here you can see it is too much responsive as well you can see while changing the size of your browser so this is all about how you can add the bootstrap into your web app and in the next part we're going to style up our bootstrap template into our required doodle app till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends welcome back here in this lesson we're gonna style our doodle app okay so by the way what exactly the bootstrap is bootstrap is the most popular css framework which is used for developing the responsive and the mobile first websites so here we're gonna do some changes some modifications into our app and make it look like a to do app thing okay so first of all we just need only one text area so i'm going to remove all other things so now here you can see we have okay i'm going to also remove this hello world thing as well which is not required right now so here we have one title which is to do app and one text area and one button for submitting our to do item here i'm going to use this container my three or container i'm going to create m y simply means margin m means margin and y means at which direction you want to put okay and then we're going to use the justify content for the alignment of our container and we have used the center alignment here and now i'm going to create another div and here i'm going to use the col which means column then md means medium okay for the grid system so here we have created a container and put our form there okay now here you can see we have button which is primary here you can do some more thing some more options are also available you can look into the boost website and we'll get plenty of options up there now here we're going to you know add some borders and then here we're going to also add some round corners into our border let me choose the 50 pixel we'll go fine then here i'm going to use the padding to 30 px now let us check it out how it looks like it looks cool now we need to change the color of our background okay why it looks so much you know simple so we're going to add some background up there and uh, let me increase the size of button as well the width of the button now it looks good and also make it somehow round okay just add the style and remove the border and your button will, will be more look like a round button okay and uh, here we're going to add some placeholder as well like write something like try typing do exercise which is very much required okay so now we have header to do app one text area with some placeholder and some mid button with round shaped let me do some changes into header thing as well but before it we're going to add the background image so simply use the url and the directory of your image so this is the background image which i have chosen for and uh, here i'm going to change the color 
of the background of our border okay the content inside the border will be into white color and at the outer area it will be the background color let me change the border color as well to the white now it's good okay we got some problem with the header so open you the css file the index.css and here you you need to add the h1 and choose the color to black and uh, let me check it out yeah it's working fine let me increase the size and change the font style as well so here i'm going to use sans, sans serif the most commonly used font style and here i'm going to choose 48 px for my font size so now our app look you know great let me show you one one, one more thing that how i have created the background image this is the paint i have divided into two parts and here i have added one color of different strength this is a dark blue color and the light blue color and change the size as well and now i'm going to increase the size to the back the original one and here you can see in this way you can create the gradient background of your choice color okay blue is my favorite color so i've used the blue color you can choose whatever color you want or any background image of your choice so this is all about how you can create the you know the template of the to do app in the next lesson we're going to learn how we can add some functionalities into our to do app till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back here in this lesson you will learn about react state and react event so what exactly the react state is the state is built in react object that is used to contain data about the component and a component state can be changed over time whenever it changes and the component then re-renders it so this is how this react single page application works so here we're going to create a input data as a state for our text area box okay so we got some error and the error uh, simply just because we are using class here you just need to change the class to class name okay because the class is already the reservoir into our react that's why we are getting that kind of problem so now let me refresh this page and here you can see all the errors went away okay now we're going to create the on change event for our react application so what basically the on change event is uh, it is like it, it will going to actually detects when the value of an input element changes so here you can see we have a text area and here whatever which we're going to pass into our text area so it is a kind of event and here we're actually collecting those characters those text from the text area okay and changing into our input data the state of our to do app so here by default i'm giving an empty value for our input data okay and now here i'm going to define a function so this function we're just going to output the content whatever content which we are passing on our text area and uh, i'm going to change the input data to the the whatever text are which are there on in, to my input box okay and at last i'm going to, going to just simply write down console.log and uh, this dot state dot input data now let's see how it works so here you can see just i have written hello it detected the content at each phase and this is how this the state changes and the company re-renders hope you understand in the next lesson we're going to learn how to exactly add the content into our to-do list that's all 
keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back to yet another lesson and here we're going to create a new function which handles event caused by the submitting a form for this i'm going to use on submit event handler on submit event is an event handler attached to the form submission event inside it we're going to mention our new function so let us check it out what exactly our to-do item will look like before adding to our actual to-do list for this i'm going to use console.log for the output so just write this dot state dot input data okay and now refresh the page so here let me write something so here you can see that while pressing up the submit button what exactly happening is it is actually re-rendering our react page and we will not able to have the console.log output into our console so here i'm going to use the alert option okay so with alert a pop-up message would be there and it includes our to-do item list so here instead of console.log i'm going to remove it write alert and you need to put it this into the backticks and at the beginning you need to put the dollar sign okay now let us check it out what our to do item will look like just write hello add and here you can see a pop-up message is there and it says hello so in this way we got our to do item and the next step is to add the to do item into our to do list so for it we need to create a to do item list so the to do item list will going to contain whatever we're going to pass into our input box and that to do item will be go inside our to do list and uh, we're going to also create a list where we're going to mention all the to do items so let us create a new js file inside the component folder list.js and here we need to create a list so simply write down to do item equal to square braces in this way we have created a list and here input data and the to do item are the control component so basically the control component in react are those in which the form data is handled by the component state so these both are the control components of our application in the next lesson we're going to create the format the template for our list.js so till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated all friends and welcome back and here we're going to create the template for our list dot js and for it we're going to use again bootstrap before it we're going to import to do list into our main form dot js okay for it you just need to simply write down import to do list from then you need to mention your file name and here after a form you need to simply write down to do list and uh, it will call that particular component basically the to do list is a component and we are nesting this component into our form.js so this is our list.js and here to the bootstrap website we have the option list group and here I'm going to use the basic list group option. So remove this part, use the fragment again, and put this. And instead of class, you need to use class name. Okay. And uh, let us check it out the how our to do app look like. So we have uh, items here into our application so let me add some margins so simply I'm going to use my-3 and here we, you can see that there is a space between a button and our list and uh, now we're going to pass the actual list the to-do list which we have created so here you need to pass it as a prop okay so this is to do item 
and we have one item which is do exercise so we're going to pass this list and see that do exercise comes into our app or not so here I'm going to write simply items equal to inside curly braces this dot state dot to do items we're going to actually passing this list as a prop and now we're going to use it inside list.js so first of all I'm going to remove all that thing and here let me remove each of these before writing the actual thing because you need to access the list and to access the list we actually need to use the map okay and first of all I'm also going to convert it into the class component so here this I'm going to copy each line one by one so UI class equal to list group and here you need to mention the name of your list this dot props dot item now which is your actual uh, list name and here use the map function and I'm going to put the value and the index by default you can put your value as an index but if you're sure that whatever content you want to write down into your list would be uh, unique then you need to you do not need to use the index but if you're not sure that whatever items you're going to add into your list is common or uncommon and use this index function and here you can see the new variant of our fragment earlier we just used the two angular braces now here as we need to pass the key we are actually writing down react.fragment and the key with the index and here li class is equal to list group items and the value so here we can see we are able to access our to do item list now again i'm going to put some space do exercise okay and now let me add one more item into our list so let's write down create react app project and here you can see that particular item which we have added into our list is coming into our to do app so in the next lesson we're going to create a function which actually add the to do items into our to do list okay that's all for this lesson keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back and here in this lesson we're going to add our to do items into our to do list till now we have created the template for our to do app and also i have shown you that how you can handle the input data and now we're going to focus on adding those items into our to do list so this is the function which we have created through this we have generated a pop up message which contains the to do item and now we're going to add this conditional statement which will going to check that the input data is empty or not and then it will going to proceed further so in that case you just need to write this dot state dot input data not equal to empty now here i'm going to use the let variable you can also use the const variable as well but with the help of let you will be able to reassign a new value to any variable but in case of const you cannot reassign a new value at all so here i'm using the let keyword rather than using the const keyword and now here i have used the separate operator which simply means three dots and you need to give provide the name of your list and the new item so it will going to append it into our list okay now here i'm going to use set state and with the help of set state we can update the state of any component and then it will instruct re react to re-render the component and its children with the updated state so this set state will give a response to any kind of event handlers server responses or any kind of prop change 
then it will going to proceed its process so here we have given a new value to our to do item and giving the input data empty okay let us check now we are able to add the to do item into our to do list or not so there's, there is a problem which we got and to solve that problem we i'm going to use the span tag okay with the help of span tag we will be able to achieve our goal so simply add span tag and here you need to pass this function on click and you need to provide the name of your the responding function which is handle submit okay and uh, let us check it out that it is still working or still giving a problem so again we are not able to add the to do item into our to do list let me do one more thing we i'm going to change the button type to the button okay and now let us check test yeah now here you can see that we are able to add the to do items into our to do app list so in this way we have achieved the goal of adding to do items into our to do list so that's all here i have shown you that how you can create the add function through which you will able to add items into your to do list hello friends and welcome back here in this lesson i'm going to add a new feature into our to do app which is delete so that we will be able to delete any to do item from our to do list here i'm going to use the bootstrap button to be specific the danger one which has a color red color so i'm going to put this code snippet just after the ally tag so that we could have the button for each to do item so here we can see we have the danger button just after every to do item now here i'm going to change the size of our button so we need to do some kind of changes into the class of the button adding a space between let me do this afterward here just write down btn dash sm which simply means that you want a small button and here you uh, have added the space between the to do item and the button if you want to increase some more spaces you can increase the magnitude from one to three or four okay and here let me add the width for the button Okay. let me add the margin for x-axis as well I'm going to set it as auto so here we have the small buttons for our to do items now we're going to add the functionalities into our these buttons but before it we need to change the title from the danger to remove i think remove would be better let's write down remove and yeah but i think we can do one more thing instead of putting the button on the in the at the bottom of the list it's better to add beside the to do item i think this looks much cool in the previous one isn't it instead of remove i think we should add this cross symbol now it looks perfect okay so now i'm going to create a function for this button and then we're going to pass that particular function or you can say method as a prop to the child component so here i have created the delete item function instead of event as we need to delete that particular to do item we have to access the 
the index for that particular to do item and th then only we will be able to delete that particular to do item from our to do list now let me pass this function to the child component which is list.js and here if we're going to press that particular remove button it will going to output the button clicked and here I have to mention that particular function for it you need to do the binding of that function so here I have okay, we got some error okay not a problem so this dot props dot delete item this is the function which I have created into the parent component and I am with the help of you know with the help of props I will be able to use that particular method into our child component so I don't think so that any other changes are required here now let us open our react app and with, let me click this cross button and here you can see we got the message button clicked so as many time I have clicked the button that particular number was there so in this way I have created a simple a remove button and which is also working fine in the next lesson we're going to add the functionality of, for the deletion of that particular to do item from the list so that's all till then keep learning keep exploring and stay motivated hello friends and welcome back so now we have created the delete button and it is now working fine as well so now here in this lesson we're going to add the functionality of deletion into our delete button so this is the method which we are going to use delete items and here first of all we need to access the list and here we need the index of the to do item which we want to be deleted so first of all I'm going to create a new variable original and it will contain the, the list which is our to do item and here another variable which I'm going to create it, it is selected and here I'm going to use the filter method filter method and react is pretty much what it says it is a process of looping through an array and including or excluding elements inside that array based on a condition which you are going to provide so here we're going to ignore that particular selected index which whichever we want to delete so here we are using the filter method so here i'm also going to pass the index so that you can see the index of each to do items okay and here I'm also going to pass this index okay now let us open the react app and here we can see we have the index 0 do exercise then 1 create react project so this is the index and through which we're going to delete that particular to do item from our to do list so let me remove this index that is not required and uh, yeah so here you can see that we we are passing the index from here and then this method which is up there on our parent component then if we're going to run that particular function and delete that particular to do item and here one more thing which we need to do is to use the set state function with the help of set state function we could you know change the value of the variables okay so simply write down this dot set state and here just write original and selected the filtered array and here we need to one, do one more thing is to add the add the spread symbol okay so you need to put the you know the square braces and then three dots at the beginning 
so in this way we are actually accessing the list our to-do list now let us open our to-do app and here let me write something here like test now let me press this cross button and it is working fine so, so in this way i have created a simple to-do app where you can add the to-do items and delete whenever that particular to-do item is completed to-do item is very much required to manage your time more efficiently so try to convert your big projects into smaller tasks and add into your to-do item and then you will be able to plan your day accordingly if you don't have a to-do items to-do list then you will do any random thing but if you have the to-do item you know what are the things important what are the priorities then it will be a little bit easy for you to complete the big projects big task within a day or within a whatever deadline you have created so that's why you should follow the to-do list and manage your work and time